and which is to inspire your audience. He was actually an anchor baby who was born in Manhattan and helped his family become citizens by anchoring them here. So please help me welcome Jim Lin, who's speaking about my trip to Japan. My trip to Japan, Jim Lin. So imagine preparing for a two-week trip to Japan with your two daughters, ages 30 and 28. <laughs> After months of preparation, we found ourselves sitting for 16 hours on an airplane and landing in Tokyo. Would this be a comfortable adventure with our daughters who hadn't spent two weeks with us since they were school children? Now that they were independent, how would we interact? Could my wife Julie and I keep up with the long hikes and bike rides that we had planned? In the past, my wife and I used to drive in the, our daughters in the front seat, and our daughters used to sit in the back seat as we chauffeured them to various school events. Now, we were in the back seat. Our older daughter, Kelly, was driving on the left side of the road, and our younger daughter, Christy, was in the front also riding shotgun, navigating on Google GPS. <laughs> As two AARP parents, <laughs> our only duty was to take pictures and pull out our credit card. <laughs> As Julie and I looked at each other, we had an aha moment. Wow, we've really come a long way. One day after walking 10 miles, I take off my shoes and sit cross-legged on the tatami mat and feast on sushi, teriyaki skewers, pizza, and an ice cold Kirin beer. What a wonderful day. As I put on my shoes and got up off the floor, I stepped up to a counter to pay the bill. My right foot hit a step, and my left foot reached for a step, but there was none. <laughs> Suddenly, I found myself tumbling downward. My head hit a glass wall, shattered it. Glass shards were hitting my scalp. I touched my head, which was spurting blood all over my Patagonia shirt. I looked at all the other customers gasping at me and the broken glass. Although there was a lot of blood, I didn't feel any pain. But my older daughter, Kelly, looked terrified and called an ambulance. I felt fine, but we eventually drove to a hospital where they stapled up my scalp. The joy and spontaneity of our trip was suddenly stifled. Everyone was so quiet. Daddy, who was their anchor, who had picked them up when they were children, had suddenly changed. Through my daughter's eyes, I had transformed into this frail old man. <laughs> Kelly and Christy kept telling me, Daddy, take it easy. Don't overdo it. <laughs> As I walked, Kelly had held my right arm and said, look out, Daddy, there's this pothole up ahead or this bump in the road. I knew that behind their take it easies and don't overdo it, they were silently thinking, Daddy is getting old. We overdid it. While they were crying, I told them they had a choice. Either they could decide to worry for the remainder of our trip or we could choose to be happy. Don't worry, be happy. <laughs> Gradually, the tone lightened. Julie and I realized a lot had changed in the last 20 years. Although we felt mentally like teenagers, 
we had become elders. And although our daughters felt like they were still school children around us, they had become independent adults. Julie and I had to face the fact that we were vulnerable, but not so vulnerable that we weren't physically able. We all still had this time to be together. As the days went by, the tone shifted. At another restaurant, we burst out laughing uncontrollably for five minutes. The waiters wondered, why the heck is, can't they stop laughing? We found ourselves on an island called Yuge Island that was rarely visited by tourists. Our guide Momo showed us her favorite view of distant islands. As we rode down the hill on our bikes, we were showered by cherry blossoms. Each time we looked at the blossoms, they showed us a different shade of pink. This was the beginning of spring in Japan. All these people who had bundled up all winter emerged from their homes to welcome the rebirth of nature. Life, uh, our relationships with our daughters was also being reborn. Walking through a thousand year old shrine, we marveled at the moss that covered the stone stairs. Momo taught us how to pray in a Shinto shrine. I prayed for health and long life and more chances to pour my love into my daughters. We visited a pizza restaurant only open on that day. The owner offered us drinks, a mandarin orange drink, a lemon drink with cream, a ginger drink with bits of ground up ginger, an orange drink that tasted different from anything we'd ever known. The owner built his own pizza oven. We ate pizza with seaweed plucked from Yuge Island several margarita pizzas, a shrimp pizza, all made from local ingredients, and we finished our, our meal with a special cheesecake. After having one of the most memorable meals of my life, the owner brought us a bill for $10 a person and also a bag of his own homegrown oranges. The owner didn't care about making money. His joy was to see us marveling at the delicious food that he made. We wondered how the evils of capitalism had corrupted us Americans to think that the only important thing in our world was making money. Our guide Momo told us she married a man from New Zealand and he gained Japanese citizenship because she was a Japanese citizen. Her husband would fly to Osaka once a month to talk to his boss, but otherwise, he worked remotely on Yuge Island. They took an abandoned home and remodeled it for $30,000. They now have a two-story house with beautiful Japanese joinery and every room has an ocean view. We returned back to San Diego with a renewed sense of vitality. Kelly and Christy both said that was the best trip they ever had. We pondered that life is completely full of risks, but all the trip planning we did couldn't prevent my fall. We could have stopped our trip right then and there. As we thought about it, a wave of gratitude swept over us. We had somehow brought two wonderful human beings into the world. We now live for the possibility of taking even more risks and living life to the fullest. Madam Toastmaster. <laughs>